Hello and welcome to the Shiny Bees Podcast, a podcast for those who like their knitting, yarn and comedy in equally large measures. I'm your host, Joe Moomar, and coming up in today's show, we have Enablers Corner, where I'll be discussing the 9-inch circular asymmetric needle, the return of the sock surgery with Claire Devine, where we'll be talking about how to fix your socks when they go wrong, and we'll be answering another question in the Agony Ant section. Hello, hello, how are you all today? Today is Sunday the 1st of February. A very warm welcome to all new listeners to the show. I hope you'll enjoy what you find here. Welcome in, have a seat, sit down. And for all of you that are returning listeners to the show, thank you very much for joining me again. I always appreciate uh, having you with me while I'm doing the show. So, today is another sock surgery kind of day and we're already two weeks into our massive year of socks, which is very exciting. How are you all doing with your socks? Are you getting anywhere? Enjoying it? I know some of you have turned your very first heel today, well done to you Shelley. And a lot of other ones are joining in, trying things they've not tried before, or just generally enjoying uh, the chatter in and around the group. Everyone's welcome to join in with that, so if you are knitting socks with anything else and you want to just come and chat with us as well, feel free. If you fancy trying socks but you're not sure where to start, come along, we'll share whatever knowledge we've got with you. And if you're a sock supremo and you turn them out and design them like there's no tomorrow, then you're also welcome to come along and have a chat with us. It'd be great to hear from you and see some of your designs as well. Today is a sock day on the Free Your Skeins um, daily posts. I do sock days on Sundays and um, I posted the evergreen socks today which was a pattern I saw around Christmas. A lot of people were casting them on around Christmas and one of, um, I think she must listen to the podcast, I think she does, um, but one of our TGS customers knitted some of the evergreen socks in one of the autumn colourways, the Sylvan Tiger yarn sock it was a bfl 100 high twist bfl base and she takes beautiful pictures if you don't follow her on instagram already then i recommend you do it's tink hickman and that's all one word and she takes lovely really well kind of composed very nice pictures so if we featured her actual project um on that post today and the socks are really nice the little um it's got a little pine a tree pattern in lace um, around the sort of leg of the sock um, quite simple um, but really pretty so I've liked those for a while and thought I've, I, how long can I leave it for I, th- I can put it in and I thought oh you know what I'm just going to put it in so I have so it's been quite funny because I've done 31 free your skins posts no well 32 I guess yeah not I guess I did do 32 Um and so there's still 300 and odd to go and a few people have said oh you're crazy you're going to do a post every single day and find a pattern every single day for a whole year um and i'm like yeah yeah why not and then i was thinking about it earlier and one of my friends um decided last year randomly i'm not sure at what point he thought this was a great idea but he did it every day to run 10k every day for a year so to be honest with you I think posting a little quick pattern pick um, every day is pretty much nothing compared to running 10k, I know which I would rather be doing, particularly in the Moravian winter. Um, I'd definitely rather be sat at home with a cup of tea picking a nice pattern for you all. So (laughs) I'm going to continue with that and not go for the 10k run instead. Um, But it's going quite well. I've had some really nice patterns sent to me. I've done a bit of enabling of my own queue, which is always good. And uh, really enjoying the process, really, of thinking about the different patterns and picking them all and sharing them all with you so that has been quite good fun other than that um, I've been busily working on my kunya shawl to try and get to the beaded part and I'm on the beads now so I've just gone and dug out my little tiny crochet hook to start doing some beading because I don't think beading is that highly recommended an activity to be doing with two two small children sat on you all the time using you as a human trampoline so I can't wait to get the podcast up and edited and I can have a quick go I say quick go I think every raw takes about two hours um 
put a quick go at the old uh, bead and see what that's like so very exciting times there with that shawl and other than that it's been reasonably quiet around here I have been trying the asymmetric needles and I'll talk about that in the enablers corner um, I have already enabled several people into buying them it would seem that was not my intention it's just that's all I was knitting um, to give them a really good try out so I'll talk about those in the next section the only other exciting happening at shiny heights this week has been that it's been little Sanimal's birthday he was two two years old where does the time go i remember sitting there waiting for him to finally make an appearance splurging all of my christmas money on yarn for every day that he was late um but bless him he is he is a little sweetheart he's a proper little charmer and um i think he enjoyed his his birthday he got some new cars and things nothing too crazy because we don't like to spend lots and lots of money on them um while they're still small because they don't I don't think they need it I think this idea of spending about thousands and thousands of pounds on your children for birthday and Christmas and iPads and everything is something that I'd like to avoid for as long as possible slash forever if I can at all manage that um so we got him a, you know a couple of little cars for his garage and some more track for his garage that was it we do get them quite small things because they don't really understand they don't really know and there's only so much colored plastic one person can have in her house before she goes completely mental and i would have liked a wooden garage but there wasn't anywhere locally that did them but when we want to try and shop local so we would we could only get something from the local toy shop so we had to go with what they had um and it's quite good fun he quite likes it uh but yeah it's, it's very brightly colored plastic and i and the, the balance of power between the wooden toys and the plastic toys is going in the wrong direction at the moment for me but he loves it so and that's the main thing isn't it he's happy so bless him a little terror so he had his little birthday party little picnic tea i didn't make a big cake um this time i made some little copy cakes and we were going to decorate them but millie forgot to get the decorating stuff from uh, the supermarket so that didn't quite happen but he didn't seem to mind he ate a lot of them anyway he was quite happy so yeah two years old good grief and next one the beast will be four next so it's quite exciting but anyway on from birthday celebrations and a happy birthday to the nitty babies that have that have been that were born around the same time as sam sammy um mave and luke happy birthday to you both and hopefully the mummies have had fun celebrating two years of survival survival of the baby and yourself more importantly so i think without further ado we better move on to a bit of enabling <laughs> So Enablers Corner this week is a review of the 9 inch circular asymmetric needles. You will have seen if you follow me on Instagram or Twitter that I've been playing with these for a couple of weeks now just giving them a really good try out so that I could talk to you about my experience of knitting with the little mini needles. Now this review came about because we were um, offered a set for review by the lovely Rachel of Tangled Yarn which is a yarn shop, online yarn shop in the UK it's based Manchester Way but it's online so you can't go visit their um, their premises uh, but you can buy all their lovely stuff and I have directed people there in the past and I do use um, Tangled Yarn myself for certain uh, items that I get I have to try and spread it around a little bit because I know a lot of yarn shop owners so I only buy certain things from certain ones it's, it's crazy but Tangled Yarn is online they do lovely newsletters actually um, with lots of kind of like pattern suggestions and enabling and things um, and as I say it's run by the lovely Rachel and I will put a link in the show notes so you can head on over there and have a look uh, what they've got but uh, she very kindly sent over a, a set to me and a set to Claire as well um, Claire's going to review them on her blog and I will link to that when she does so so that you can get two different points of view but today I am going to talk about my experience of using 
the needles. They are um, the Kinky Amibari Asymmetric Circular. They are 9 inches, 23 centimeters, and they are made from wood. And one of the needles, instead of them both being the same size, one of the needles is slightly longer than the other one, asymmetric needles. Now I haven't used the little teeny tiny needles before. As I mentioned in the last episode, um, some people uh, like CC of the Geeky Girls absolutely loves them, raves about them. Uh, Claire's tried them, she was less convinced but she tried the metal ones, she's never tried the asymmetric ones before but on the metal ones she didn't really feel that they worked with her knitting style. She's a massive fan of Magic Loop as you know so and that's on a proper big size needle. Um, I must confess I really like Magic Loop too. I have to be in a DPN girl through and three from the beginning. I actually really like Magic Loop as well. So I decided to cast on with a vanilla sock pattern. Uh, 70, was it 72? 64 stitches I think it was. Um, I did write it in on Ravelry. Um, of a yarn that I dyed myself. That I dyed at a workshop with Debbie Tomkeys at Pearl City Yarns RIP. Uh, not Debbie, Pearl City Yarns, and um, Debbie's still fighting fit, don't you worry, and um, uh, it was a self-striping sock workshop and I dyed some yarn um, that was called Makaru Sunset, so it was it was based on the colours that I remembered from seeing the beautiful sunsets in Africa, I will see if I can find a picture and I'll put it in the show notes, from what I remember all of the photos that I took uh, were a little bit blurry because it was dark, the exposure times meant that um, it, I didn't have a tripod, it was just a bit blurry, so, uh, but they were beautiful, the sunsets they were lovely and the, the sky would be really really dark blue and very clear looking um, at the top and then towards the horizon it would get lighter and lighter and get to sort of a goldy burnt orange where the sun was, so uh, I've cast on with those, they're very good fun, I love self striping yarns as you know and this one is no exception, chiefly because it was designed and dyed by my good self. Um, and I didn't do that bad a job considering I was absolutely hanging and completely shattered when I went. I was properly sleep deprived um, and in a bit of a daze for most of it. Uh, so it wasn't too bad considering it was the first ever yarn I'd dyed, uh, only yarn I'd dyed actually still to date. And so I cast that on vanilla sock pattern and cracked on with that. Now there were no instructions as to which hand you held the bigger part in or the smaller part in and I guess you could try it both ways see what you think I followed because I'm a little lemming the way it was put in the packet and the way it was put in the packet was the smaller one on the left and the larger needle on the right which to me as a righty suggested that you, that you use the bigger needle for your stabbing as I call it uh, so you work in needle you move it in and out um, and you're wrapping the, the yarn around to make the stitches um, I took that to be the longer needle and that's what I've been doing throughout initially it was well when I first opened the packet I just burst out laughing chiefly because um, they were they were so small I asked for 2.25 millimeters because that's the size I normally knit on and um, they were tiny they looked like needles for borrowers uh, so once I finished laughing and I mean I've got very small hands compared to the majority of people and um, like I wore a size J ring I've got little fingers I've got little hands um, and uh, I was wondering exactly how it was going to go but I cast on and I got the hang of the German twisted cast on quite quickly it was quite strange to hold them initially because you're used to a much bigger needle that you hold much further back so the moment and the kind of when you of the moment of the needle where you hold it and the kind of up and down movement that you make to to move the needle around your stitches is normally quite a bit further back from where this was so that was quite strange to get used to initially and um, but I picked it up very quickly and um, it was a little bit fiddly just to get the first um, first couple of stitches as it always is when I was joining in the round and then I was off two by two rib and I found it equally easy to do uh, pearl stitches as I did knit stitches and the big needle in my right hand seemed to be working quite well. 
I probably should say at this point that I knit English style with a Scottish hold so um, I have my hands I have the working yarn in my right hand and I have my hands on top of the needles with little V's with the needles held in my fingers underneath as opposed to holding the needle like a pen which apparently is the English hold for English style and and having the needles running over the top of your the top of your hand through the V of your thumb and finger I don't have it like that I have a V and the needles underneath as opposed to a V but the needles on top of my the top of my hand so I can knit continental but I don't I had a little try at knitting with it continental in it seemed quite quite good actually it worked quite nicely it wasn't any major schlep compared to doing it with dpn or anything there wasn't a real difference um as such the only difference that i'm noticing as i'm knitting now is the way that you put the needle into the stitch is different as in the direction sort of the the angle that you're going at is different to what it would be if I was knitting it with larger needles. In that, if you're knitting it magic loop or DPNs, you're holding it on top, you're looking down on top of it, your hands are V's look and they're pointing down, and you're putting it in and it's very flat, it's like 90 degrees. Um and the working well not the well the working yarn drops down, but the work that you've knitted is underneath it so it's all in a vertical plane now with the little mini circulars that's not the case the work is pointing towards your tummy instead of put pointing towards your knees so when i found when i'm putting the needle in it's a di completely different plane that you're putting it in on it's a completely different angle because instead of the work being downwards the work's pointing towards you so the little teardrop shape of the stitch is not vertical it's now horizontal so it's changed the way that I'm actually knitting with them because to get the needle in I've got to do a different action with my hand so I would say as a result this is not faster than I would be with the same needles that are bigger purely because I'm not knitting the same way now that might change as I get more confident with them and try them more but at the moment I would say that they're not the idea that they're faster to me is not the case uh, like I said last time I think it's just that like if you're in a small a car that's close to the ground it feels faster but you're not going any quicker and um, I think it's it's a scale thing <laughs> personally <laughs> um, having said that um, they are really quite good fun to use I enjoy picking them up I enjoy working with them they feel really nice in my hands even though it's a different sort of knitting actually it's it's quite good in a way because if your hands get tired from knitting the normal way with that weight of yarn my usual solution would be to change to a different project and let's face it I've always got 11 there's plenty of choice um but change to a different weight of needle with a different stitch pattern to give my hands a bit of a rest now in this case I think I could probably get away with changing to these needles and it would give my hands a bit of a rest again um they're very good fun to knit with I enjoy like I said I enjoy sitting there knitting with them it feels quite sporty and quite fun and I like having something quite small in my hands Um, how much that is down to the yarn I don't know I'm sure it would be the same anyway and um, the other thing I thought with these is that it makes them extremely handbag friendly particularly uh, if as the, is the case for me at the moment if uh, you split the ball of yarn into 250 gram balls um, mine is in 250 gram balls it makes uh, carrying the projects around really small it's almost like disco handbag size how awesome would that be you could dance around your little work in progress in your disco handbag which i think is quite good because sometimes if you have big long needles and the thin needles like 2.25s and you're in your handbag and they get a little bit squashed it's easy to bend them um, Clearly, you wouldn't bend the wood, you'd snap it, but the chance of that happening, because they're so short, I think are quite small. So, I think it's quite good in that way as well. Um, I am just about to start working uh, the heel flap, and I'm not going to attempt to work the entire heel flap on one 9-inch circular. Now, I am aware that there are tutorials out there 
or people have written in forums and stuff how they go about doing it and they they basically mark off the heel different parts of the heel flap and just work between the markers to do that you could i guess if you're on a desert island consider doing it that way or indeed if you find it easier you could do it that way i find heel flaps a little bit fiddly at the best of times anyway especially you know if you've got dpns or what have you that does add an extra dimension you wouldn't have them here necessarily but i think if i was going to stay on nine inch circulars i would want another set to just work the heel flap on just to give yourself a little bit more space um and you're not fiddling about with everything around a really small circumference because it's only 23 centimeters it's not a lot of space the other thing you could do is of course you use um, a DPN and just transfer them to a DPN, work the back and forth, go turn the heel, pick everything up, get it back into a nice normal circumference, get your, your decreases done and when you're back onto knitting the foot just change back to your little circular needles which is probably what I would I would go for um, I think once I get to that stage. and. Um, if any of you have tried it, if any of you do do the entire thing on the 9 inch circulars, then please do get in touch and I will read that out on, on a subsequent podcast about how you do that. Um, I'd be very interested to hear it. But um, whilst it's nice to be able to use one pair of needles for the whole thing, I'm a bit like uh, pragmatic with these things. And I think if it's easier and quicker to change or and quickly use DPNs or what have you to work back and forth, then do it rather than fiddle around um unless you want some particular kind of challenge for only using that one pair of needles. I would say in summary, give them a try. They, they are good fun. Like I say, I'm not convinced they are quicker, but I can still, I can definitely see myself using these again. And I can certainly see myself giving the metal tipped um, Cirques a try. I think somebody is going, I think it was Jolie from Jolie's Kitchen was gonna bring her collection of them down to Edinburgh Yarn Festival. Um, and if that does come off me, Claire and I will, will do a little live record and try some of them out maybe um, down there. But um, I think the, the, they've definitely got their place in your knitting bag and they're definitely worth um, either borrowing a set um, if funds are a little bit tight to have a play with or just buy a set in your usual size and try it. I have found that my gauge has been a little bit looser with these needles and I think that's a fairly common thing for people to say um, but not to the point where it would completely ruin the the sock the sock is still going to be absolutely fine um, it's just slightly looser than it would be if I was doing them on a magic loop for instance and that could be because I'm consciously keeping it a little bit looser um, because I know it's a very small, small diameter of uh, needle uh, but obviously it's very difficult to tell what, which which of those is the case so um, that is my review of the Kinky Amibari needles they are available from www.tangled-yarn.co.uk and they are priced at £10.95 per set and I am very pleased to have a set to give away today on the podcast which is always nice so if you'd like to be in with a chance to win a set of the Kinky Amibari 9 inch circular needles, finest Japanese bamboo, nice little swizzle, twizzle twizzle cable that spins around, uh, good fun to knit with, great disco handbag project needles, then you need to head on over to the thread on Ravelry. There will be a separate giveaway thread, apologies, and um, if you go in there and tell me which of the yarns from Tangled Yarn you'd most like to try with your Kinky Amabari needles, if you won them, then you will be entered into a prize draw to win a set of those needles. So we will close the draw for that on the 15th of February and we I will draw the person uh, the winner shortly thereafter. I would have given you a bit longer usually, however, I'm going off to pod retreat, so I won't be available the weekend after. So I'll have pre-recorded an episode for that and uh, I'll be too busy knitting and having fun to do a draw. So um, we will close it on the 15th. So you've got two weeks from today, so you're gonna have to be sharp, but um, and um, 
get over to tangled-yarn.co.uk and pick a yarn that you would like to knit with your nine inch kinky amibari needles so thank you very much to rachel for sending those over for review and i think we'd better stop the enabling right now and head on over to the sock surgery so i'll be joined again by claire and kate for our latest episode of the sock surgery and in this episode we're going to be talking about fixing your socks because clearly nobody's perfect and everybody does make mistakes and what happens when you drop your needle and it flies across the room or down through the decking and you drop stitches and everything else how do you go about fixing it so Kate if I hand over to you and you can kick us off with your question yeah I think you've just already uh, mentioned one of my uh, issues with the with knitting socks, especially when a, a DPN is quite short and you take your attention away or pull it out of a project bag a little bit heavy handedly and the whole needle comes out. Um, so you end up with 20 stitches that need to be caught really quickly. But um, yeah, so that's a whole load of dropped stitches, I suppose. But what do you do about, say, a single or a couple of dropped stitches? Or on mass, mm-hmm. um, the on on mass ones are a little little sort of more <laughs> dramatic, and this happens. I I don't generally use DPNs to knit socks, but I do use Magic Loop, and I have been known to sort of pull with wild abandon in the completely wrong direction, and then just look down and be like, oh, yes, right, and I have half of my sock off the needles completely. So it happens to everyone. I think in that um, situation, ideally you want to find a flat surface. I often say to people, there's a couple of things that I think you should have close at hand in your knitting bag at all times. And um, stay calm, find a flat surface, and um, because it's much easier to pick up stitches if you've got your knitting flat. And it's much um, le- they're much less likely to, to run if you're not sort of moving it. I find if you keep it in your lap, um, you tend to move the knitting more. I suppose it also depends what kind of yarn you're using using if you're using a really nice sheepy yarn the joy of that is that the stitches are quite sticky and they don't tend to run if you're using something smoother or a little more luxurious like a I've just knit a pair of socks with some beautiful merino cashmere nylon and it's really slippy and the stitches just go everywhere so my advice would be always have a little crochet hook you want one that's the same size as your sock needle, so a two and a half millimeter or a 2.25 millimeter. You can get little tiny ones um, that you can put on a key ring. I've seen them. I know my local yarn shop sells them, and you can also find them on places like Etsy. And they're great because I sort of keep that in my knitting bag, and it's very good for picking up stitches. So a crochet hook is a lifesaver when it comes to picking up one or two dropped stitches um, especially when it's dropped down more than sort of one row if it's just one row I tend to use my knitting needles to do that and the other thing that I think is an absolute lifesaver and um, anyone who listened to our unwind episode will know about my extreme love for the lockable stitch marker and um, because I spoke about it with um with sort of quite a lot of excitement but lockable stitch markers really are your friends they catch stitches so if you might if you're at knit night, drinking your glass of wine and you drop a stitch and it's dark and you're not sure how you're going to pick it up, click it with a lockable stitch marker. That stops it from running anywhere. And then you can pick it back up when you've got better light or a table or you're not having a, a beverage. Um, you can tell where I, most of my knitting disasters <laughs> happen, can't you? Um, <laughs> Santa did bring me some uh, lockable stitch markers, which was very nice of him. Along with a higher, higher interchangeable set, but that's another story. You have a very well-trained Santa. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so lockable stitch markers and a crochet hook will help you fix any dropped stitches. And as usual, I'll find some links for um, picking up stitches and add those to the show notes. And then another thing I think is your friend when learning to knit socks, which might not help you avoid mistakes but it will certainly help you fix mistakes a little less painfully it's a lifeline I don't know if you use lifelines Kate or Joe. I don't but mainly because I don't know how to 
because that kind of was one of my next bits of question. If I find that I've done something wrong or I've got the wrong stitch count, I generally like slowly but surely undo stitch by stitch. But it's hard to know where you actually went wrong. You could end up doing this for rows and rows and it takes so much longer than the knitting did in the first place. Um, but I don't really know how to rip out without then not being, knowing how to stop. Okay, I suppose ripping back, there's, there's ripping back or frogging and tinking. Tinking is good if you're going a little bit and that's mm. what you're talking about, knitting backwards. If you're just going sort of a row or back one row or if you're knitting a quite a complicated pattern that you don't want to pull out quite a lot of knitting. If you need to pull back quite a lot of knitting, really the solution is to take your needles out and to just unravel it, which can be a little bit disconcerting and a little bit heart stopping this is where I think lifelines are great with socks I know people often advocate them for knitting lace and a lifeline for those of you who don't know is a another piece of yarn usually I think smooth cotton crochet cotton works well and you place that in the stitches and then you knit on so what you'll have is you're knitting and at a point in your knitting you'll have this sort of line of um crochet cotton that are hot that's holding your stitches there those those stitches within the knitting so what you can do is if you do find that you've made a mistake you and, and you're not sure where it is or it's a huge mistake is you can just take your needles out and pull the yarn back to that point where you've got that lifeline and it's much easier to pick up the stitches and that's what it does is it means that your stitches don't run because if you've ever had to pick up 64 stitches, <laughs> you know for a fact that you get like 62 and two of them run off or you get 63 and one of them gets dropped and you don't realise until you've knit 10 rows and at least having the lifeline in, you've got that there. Um, places I would definitely include a lifeline if you're learning to knit socks is before you start your heel flap because I think then you have a definite point in your sock. You've reached a point, now you're going to start doing something completely different. So if you mess up the heel flap or your stitches are off or you need to lengthen it or shorten it, um, you can just rip it back quite easily. So those would be my main hints and tips for sort of fixing issues or avoiding issues. The other thing that's a useful skill when knitting socks is learning how to fix directional decreases. So these are your slip slip knit and you'll knit two together your right and left leaning decreases because often well not often but uh, occasionally you might mix them up so you might do a when you're doing your toe you might do a, a knit two together when you should do a slip slip knit and instead of going all the way back you can drop back down and swap that decrease around and I'll find some videos for that because it's quite difficult to explain um, without being able to show people but that's another thing that's handy for socks so those are my main bits and pieces and then it would be great to hear of, of other people's issues and, and and we can think of solutions for those. Claire, if you dropped a stitch in a barrier of pattern, mm -hmm. can it be rectified or is it a lost cause? Often it can. It takes practice. Um, with my own knitting, I suppose I evaluate things. So you need to think about how complicated the pattern is so if you're just doing a sort of a simple lace eyelet or a simple cable you can drop back down and you can uh, pick up a stitch within a pattern providing it's reasonably simple um, you can drop down and and cross over recross a cable like I'd be quite happy dropping down sort of five rows and recrossing a cable wow and that kind of stuff so it's it's fixable I often think you have to look at it and think how long is it going to take me to fix that? And how mm -hmm. long would it take me to re-knit it? Um, and sometimes you just have to accept that you have to tear it all out and knit it okay. again. Um, the other thing, if you've dropped stitches, is that you need to think about your tension. So if you've dropped a stitch and then knitted quite a lot and you only notice, if you need to pick that stitch up like five to ten rows, you're going to be putting strain on the yarn on the other pieces of yarn because you've not actually used yarn to create that stitch in all of those rows. So it might impact your tension. So it's a matter of looking at it and, and sort of evaluating every issue as it comes up. But I think a lot of things can be fixed. They just take practice. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I have another kind of tip for the, when you drop all of your stitches off your very slippy metal dpns don't use metal dpns um, not even the nice ones um, um 
I have it in my, my little knitting pouch thing. Uh, it's, a, it is a stitch holder, I guess. And it's one of the kind of quite old fashioned ones done by Prim or someone like that. And it's a really big, long uh, safety pin. But the diameter ah. of the safety pin is usually smaller than that of your original needle. Yeah. And um, you can quickly put it through and actually lock it off. So it's easier to get through because it's smaller than the stitches would have been in the first place. And it's long enough to get through a whole row of DPN drop stitches. That's fantastic. So that's my yeah. top tip. That's what you get for having your yeah. granny's vintage knitting um, bag. <laughs> I, have, I have some of those. I think they're Knit Pro ones, but I've only used them for holding stitches for an intended kind of hold rather than to grab them quickly. But yeah, I suppose it's just the same thing really, isn't it? Just unintentional. Yeah, it's just a little bit easy because of the smaller diameter. I mean, it doesn't work with every stitch holder. I find it's that one is the particularly easy one. And there are some you can get that have a very pointy end as well that are quite big and old-fashioned that have got a big kind of metal loop to them. I'll take a picture and put it in the show notes of the two different kinds. And they're actually quite easy to use as well because it's pointy and thin. So there you go. Every day's a school day. <laughs> So we're back with Claire for the Agony Ant section of the podcast and the fan on my computer has just cranked up to about a million um, and we have a question from Hot Knitter. I don't know if that means she's good looking or whether she's actually warm temperature wise but Hot Knitter says I usually knit my socks on size double zero, yes double zero, to get a gauge of eight stitches per inch. With a small foot I knit them on 56 inches, uh, correction stitches. There are many interesting patterns that I would like to knit, but the patterns come in sizes medium and large. How do I convert a medium to a small, i.e. to one that uses 56 stitches? Often people recommend sizing down by knitting with a smaller needle, but in my case I'm not willing to go down to a size triple zero. Amen to that. Size double zero metal needles bend enough as it is. I knit all my socks toe up. Thanks for any help you can share. Claire. Hi, um, thanks for a really useful question. This links in, I think, with conversations we've been having with other people about gauge and making your socks fit and sometimes you can't get the right gauge, etc. So I've got a couple of hints and tips. Um, the first one, I suppose, is maybe not an indirect answer to your question but it will help others is if you are struggling you can um, change your needle size but do bear in mind that reducing your needle size will change the fabric of the um, the knitted fabric and while you're looking to attain a certain gauge you are also looking to um, maintain a certain fabric construction so don't always just think that changing needles is the best solution because you might end up with a fabric that you don't like. So make sure that you've got a good gauge, but also a fabric that you like. Um, I chatted with Mossy Moss Stitch, and Joe's gonna have to remind me of her real life name. Ah! Ah! We I all know each other by Ravelry names. Kirsty, I just think people Kirsty, thank you. Sorry, Kirsty. I just think of people in terms of Ravatars and like Twitter handles or Ravelry names. Like we don't even need real names anymore. Anyway, I digress. We had a chat earlier because she was unable to get gauge and I suggested looking at the yarn you're using. Not all sock yarn is created equal. Some sock yarn is finer than other sock yarn. So do bear that in mind. Um, you can either get a, a thinner yarn if you're not sort of able to get the gauge or a thicker yarn and just try things out. So those are some things you can try if you're having issues with gauge and getting the right gauge or getting the right sort of fit from your gauge. In direct relation to Hot Knitter's question, it's a little bit tricky. My first sort of suggestion would be look for designers who design patterns that fit you. Um, there should be plenty of people out there designing a 56 stitch sock. I don't think it's that small. I always try to do a 56 stitch sock in my patterns um, because I often knit my own socks at 56, 56 stitches when I can speak. If you can't find 56 stitches, um, it might be for one of two reasons. One, the designer doesn't see the, the need to produce that size, 
or that the stitch pattern they've chosen doesn't divide into that size. And I can't tell you the amount of times that I've come up with a brilliant plan for a sock and then realized that I can't make it work at 56, 64 and 72 without like some crazy math and jiggering my little charts around. Um, if that's your pattern, you're going to have a bit of difficulty uh, if, if it's got sort of a, a huge panel, a cable panel or a large lace panel that doesn't fit into that right multiple, that's going to be tricky. My main tip to you would be to look for stitch patterns or for socks with stitch patterns that have small repeats. So four stitches, six stitches, eight stitches. Um, you're going to have to do some maths. There's no way you can get around this without sort of doing some maths and playing around. But what you could easily do is take a 64 stitch pattern and take out a pattern repeat or two pattern repeats if it had a, a four stitch repeat and then you'd get 56 stitches. Then you need to adjust the numbers for your heel. Um, and, and I can give you some, I'll give some links in the show notes to places that can help with that. But that's just a math thing and finding the right resources. There's some great resources online that will help you give the right num get the right numbers. And then you plug in your numbers and you're away. If you've got a larger cabled panel and you are absolutely adamant that you want to knit it, you're going to have to rework that whole chart. And that might take quite a lot of time and effort. And I think you'd probably be better looking for something that you like that fits you better. But that depends how much time you want to spend doing maths. Oh, brilliant. Some really practical points there. Because, I mean, I've even got frustrated at patterns before that only come in two sizes, one of which is enormous and one of which is really small. Um, like the monkey socks, uh, for instance. And they are quite a wide pattern repeat, so it isn't that easy to get in between one and sometimes you don't really understand why someone's done that or I didn't until you just told us yeah I actually there are so many times where I want to do something and then I don't do it because I can't get the amount of sizes I want to provide especially when I'm designing for sort of the knitter where I have to have so many sizes at so many intervals you just sort of have to do things that work um, so I completely understand why some designers will just have a sock in one size because it only works in that size. And my answer is sometimes things just don't work for us and we kind of have to accept that, unfortunately. Thanks. Super. Well, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for this episode. I hope you've all enjoyed what you've heard. Just a quick reminder that there are still a pair of tickets to Edinburgh Yarn Festival up for grabs. Over in the Ravelry group, they, the competition closes for that in the next few days. So get over to the giveaway for that and enter if you'd like to win tickets to Edinburgh Yarn Festival. And look out next week for a very, very special interview with none other than Kate Davies herself which will be coming out next Sunday. I had the pleasure of interviewing her last week and she chats about all sorts of things yarning in business. So if you're a fan of her work or you just want to know what she does all day, um, then that's definitely a must listen. That will be out next week and it will be episode 34, which will be an interview with Kate Davies. So I hope you all have a great week. Happy crafting. Speak to you all again soon. Bye. Into the Shiny Bees podcast, a podcast for those who like their yarn, knitting, and comedy in equally large measures. If you'd like to get in contact, you can do so via the blog, where you can find full show notes every week at www.shinybees.com. I'm Shiny Bees on Ravelry, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Pinterest. Or you can contact me at shinybeesinfo at gmail.com.